Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we are going to be doing a follow up on the Raspberry Pi head unit as well as the shutdown and startup script. So let's begin. Now, if you guys haven't seen the first video of me installing the Raspberry Pi head unit into my car, I will leave a link right on the top left. That way I'll catch you up with what we're talking about today. Now I had this head unit installed into my car for about three to four weeks. So I actually had enough time to play around with it as well as one of the questions that you guys were asking, heat. Luckily for me, during this whole three or four week period of time, we've been getting heat waves. So there was actually internal temperatures in the car of 141, 141 degrees. degrees. And there's times where the sun was directly onto the head unit. And I could say it survived and didn't have any problems. It didn't melt, it didn't warp or anything and the screen didn't crack. And the Raspberry Pi did not overheat. I was still able to boot it up and it still didn't give me that little overheat symbol that you would get on the Raspberry Pis if it got too hot. I also took it apart, which I don't have any footage of, uh, just a little, just to see if anything warped or deformed. And I gotta say the hot glue was still in place. It wasn't like soft or anything. Everything behind there was not deformed. It still stayed its place. So I could safely say it survived uh, a really hot temperatures and I'm pretty certain that it's gonna be no problem now. One of the hottest day of the week, I did take it for a good half an hour drive to see if it will overheat later on and it did not. I also actually got footage, which I will show you in a bit of uh, the gauges working and everything. But to jump in, I did have a little bit of a problem. Well, I wouldn't say a problem, but more like something that could have been done a little bit better on the open auto software. So I'll show you here. All right, so here it is, the dashboard working in my car. It's been great for the past couple of weeks. I have not had any issues with it. And as you can see from my point of view, I actually don't see any reflections well maybe a little but not really to a point where it bothers me because once I load in the Google Maps and everything it works perfectly fine um, as far as this goes I do really like the layout but it is a little clumsy at times so if I was to go into Android Auto and I resume where I was you could see that I'm in the map but in order for me to get out um, I would have to press the home button exit that's two clicks already and then press this menu button and then go to dashboards, and then I could get to my dashboard. Now also, the dashboard has been working amazing. I'm actually able to get all the stuff that I need, like my air-fuel ratio, throttle position, uh, the boost controller. Now this is boost only, so it doesn't read vacuum. Um, there is a way to mathematically put it together where it will read uh, vacuum, but I don't have that working yet, as well as uh, my engine temperature and the load. So this is all the information that I kind of need, especially the air-fuel ratio. Look how, look how clean that is, 14.7. And now during that day where it was really hot temperatures, uh, I took a drive and took a little short clip of the gauges. One of the things that I don't have installed yet, which is the FM radio, and I do have the dongle for it. I just haven't had a chance to take it apart, plug it in. And when I do take it apart the next time, I wanna rerun USB cables into the car now that I know that everything works and it's reliable. Also, I want to give this three or four week period of time to actually test my shut and start and shutdown script, which I did a little bit more improvement, change around with the timings and stuff like that. So it's now extremely reliable which is something I'm gonna be posting on this video. Right now I have it set up as when I turn the key to the on position, it'll actually give it a three second delay before it actually triggers the Raspberry Pi to go on. This way it gives you time to actually crank the engine and start it up. Then when it does start, even if you turned off the key right away before the Raspberry Pi already booted, the script will take an effect as soon as the Raspberry Pi boots and it'll shut down the Raspberry Pi. So we're good on that part, as well as if you are running and you turn the key off, it will shut it down as well. The shutdown process takes about three seconds and the boot up process is anywhere between 20 to 30 seconds. Why is there that big gap? Is because if you are using the SD card um, on stock settings, it's about 30 seconds. Now I overclocked the SD card, which is one of the videos I've done years ago to from 50 megahertz to 100 megahertz. And I was able to achieve about like 21 seconds, 20 seconds, right around that range. So it does speed up the boot up time. A couple of things you can do to speed up the boot up time is either use a USB 3 mass storage device plugged into the USB or what I've read is that have an SD card reader that you could plug into the USB because that actually just works as well and it's still faster than the factory Raspberry Pi SD card reader. So those are the two things you could do to speed up the boot up time just because 
that's the only problem we have. Now I could tolerate the 30 seconds. That's because my car takes a little bit to warm up and I don't mind just waiting for that 30 seconds to let the car kind of like reach up a little bit more temperature than just normally starting up the car and going. So I'm good with that. Otherwise, the startup and shutdown script works flawlessly right now. Now I do have a diagram right here for the startup, which connects the ESP over to a relay. And then the relay will trigger the enable switch, the global enable on the Raspberry Pi. I will also have a script on my GitHub that you will load into the ESP. Now the ESP I'm using is called the ESP01 and I am using a little USB programming device connected right to it. You could buy a set of these. I think I total cost of that was about 12 to $15 just getting that set. If you didn't need four ESPs, you could just buy it cheaper for like two ESPs. It just comes in a set like that. So I'll leave a link to what I purchased. This way you know what I'm using for that ESP. So here is the wiring diagram for the shutdown script. And as you can see, it's just plugged to these two GPIOs and it plugs directly to the relay. And as soon as it detects that the car is off or when the relay is turned off, it'll go from a closed loop to an open loop. And the Python script I have loaded uh, will detect if it's open or closed and it'll appropriately do what it needs to do, which is shut down. Now in the script itself, there are two things that you need to do. One, place it in a directory that you know you are able to read. So I just left it in the pi main directory. So slash home slash pi. And two, I put it, instead of making a whole service and startup script and all this other stuff, I put it into a cron tab as one line of script. So on, on every reboot, it will start up that script automatically. So it starts up very soon. Now it might be a little bit confusing for me just explaining it this way. So I will leave what I'm explaining right now on the GitHub so you know where what to type in. This script has been tested for over, I don't know, every day that I drive the car, I have to boot up and shut down the car for about six or seven times a day. That's because I have to drop off my son at daycare, pick him up from daycare, go to work, get home from work. So minimum is eight. And then sometimes if I need to go pick up lunch or something, that's 10. So if I do that, say five times a week, I probably start and shut off the car more than four or 500 times already between these couple of weeks. Now that I think about it, I, I probably do that a lot. <laughs> anyway, the next um, upgrade that I am gonna be doing to the car will be the FM modulator or the DABS Plus. Uh, I will be adding two USB ports to the car itself and possibly a little um, rotary tool for the volume because I can't stand touching the screen to change the volume because it's just not convenient when you're driving. So I definitely will be making those upgrades as well as uh, adding possibly a reverse camera. So uh, I don't know if I'm gonna do that in the same video, but I will be adding the USB ports and all that other stuff to the car. Anyway, that is it for me. Uh, thanks for watching. If you guys have any questions about this, let me know down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say, my Nerd Cave, hack till it hurts.